Welcome to the channel and welcome to this hobby painting video. Today we are going to be painting Horus Heresy Ultramarines in Mark VI armour. So here are four examples of minis that are already painted. Um, you can see them, unlike the um, undercoated ones, they are mounted on March of War scenic bases. I'm going to do a separate video for the painting of those bases and just concentrate on the painting of the Marines it's themselves. This is a technique I, um, I was going to say developed, uh, messed about with until I found something that I thought loosely worked. Um, to try and churn the Marines out quickly and make them look good at arm's length. So, zooming in with the camera, some of these might not look so great, but uh, they are designed to be simple, quick, and look good on the tabletop. So, this is how I'm going to do it. So, I'm going to talk through the paints and the technique, and then I will... Uh, show you uh, the stages as I uh, as I paint them. So first off, these are undercoated in Macrag blue. Um, that forms the base of the whole model. I when I'm spraying them, I make sure I get underneath as well, um, so as to cover all angles because I'm using it as the base for the model. Right, the first step is a 50-50 mix of Drakenoth Nightshade and Laramie Medium over the entire model, making sure it doesn't pool. Um, normally, if you've seen many of my previous painting videos, I quite like it when it pools. It gives a lot of definition. Um, but on these minis, I don't want them to do that. Um, then I do a very light... I mean, I really wouldn't call it an edge highlight. A very light, hard line highlight with Calgar Blue on just a couple of the edges just to make them stand out. Then paint all the metal parts with Iron Hand Steel. Then go over them all with, come on, focus, with Basilicanum Grey, which always needs a lot of shaking. Then dry brush over all the metal parts with Iron Breaker. Then over the black parts with a uh, black templar on these minis, that tends to be the um, armor undersuit parts of the gun casing and the end of the gun barrel. This is the first marine army I've ever done where I haven't drilled out the gun barrels. So I'm trying to cover that off with painting rather than the use of the drill. Uh, the gold parts, um, I've got the wrong gold. Right, you didn't see that. Seamless. The gold parts uh, painting in Retributor Armour. I'll tell you why I've got the wrong gold out. is because the scenic bases use that colour gold. And I'm actually filming both the videos at the same time. They've just got a bit jumbled up, it's all. So all the gold parts with Retributor Armour. And then some of the gold parts washed with Seraphim Sepia. Some of them don't need it because... There's enough definition from the Drakonoth to provide shade around it. I'll show you what I mean when I do it. Uh, then Mephiston Red and uh, Evil Sun Scarlet for the red parts, the eyepieces, the lenses, that kind of stuff. And then a touch-up with Macrag Blue anywhere I have made mistakes. Now, there are a couple of other colours with this technique that I use for the... Um, other miniatures, so the likes of the sergeants with shoulder pads, uh, the some um, uh, sort of scroll work on the Legion Vexillas. Um, so I will cover those in another video, but for completeness, the paints I use for those are Corax White and White Scar, and then the other thingy bobs, uh, Morgast Bone with sepia over but i will cover that in another video so there are the paints that's loosely what i do with them let's get cracking okay so the first step is to get the um the shade down on the mini so i have put 15 drops of draconoth and 15 drops of larimum 
in here, giving it a good stir. I like to use one of these palettes uh, with the little mixing things. Um, I think it was like a couple of quid from Amazon. And I've measured out the, um, the things with, with a pipette because I find it's more readily reproducible than brushes full. Um, so, um, yeah, and I've got, what have I got here? I've got a Citadel Shea brush. I find these are quite good for the random inkings of things. They're good at sort of, they've got stiff bristles, so you can wiggle them into the, uh, wiggle them into the cracks. Get both the leggies done. Now, I know technically I only need to paint the parts of the model that I am going to, um, uh, that are going to be exposed and remain blue, but I find when I do that, I tend to miss bits. So, um, what I what works for me is to just paint the whole mini. If there are bits that I am absolutely definitely not going to put any blue anywhere near, like the bolt gun, I will uh, I will leave that out, but only because that's an easy absolute. <laughs> thing to be able to avoid so you get the gist see you in a mo so this is always the problem i find when painting small batches i prefer big batches at least sort of you know, uh, batches of 10 um because they take a long time to dry i want to highlight this one the ink's still wet so i've got my usb fan pointed at them but but we still have pockets of of wet wash that cannot really do anything about. Okay, so now these are dry, and I've had a few camera-related issues that I have hopefully resolved. I'm onto the Calgar Blue. I've put a blob of it on my wet palette and mixed a fair amount of water in with it. I want it to be fairly thin so it flows easily off the brush. Now I'm not going to go highlight nuts on the model, I just want to pick out a couple of key things just to make it pop. Raised ridges, I'm going to use the flat of my brush just to let the colour just sort of ping off on the top of it, makes it slightly more three-dimensional. Occasionally, and I don't do this on all of them, do that on the, uh, on the toe caps. Can also, if I'm feeling so inclined, do it on the um, ankly bits. But normally, um, kneecaps, corners of the shoulder guards, shoulder pads, I should say. What's a shoulder guard? A bit more paint on the old brush. And then the key here is, is control. Putting my hands together like this means I get a lot more control over the brush. I've got a bit too much paint on this one, but it's, looks like I'm getting away with it. It's coming off a bit thicker than I would otherwise choose. But that, I think, looks like it just... Oh, no, there's not enough on here. Do that bit again. It just makes those hard edges come out. But the other thing, and this is the most skill-related thing on the entire mini, uh, again, uh, fingers bracing and get the paint right, and I might need a couple of goes at it, so I might sort of s quickly uh, swipe it off with my finger if it goes wrong. It's just a tiny line down the nose and down the forehead. Just gives it a little bit more of a of a three dimensional look from certain angles, and that's all I'm going to do from a highlighting point of view, because <clears throat> it's a faff, and you either do the whole. In my opinion, you either do the whole model to the nth degree to get an overall effect, or you just need to do a couple of little bits. And normally, if I can, I would do those with a dry brush, but with the nature of the sharp edges, it would smear too much over the shoulder part, which I don't want it to do, which is why I'm doing that sort of weird sideways on highlighty thing. Right, now we're gonna move on to the metal parts of the miniature. 
Uh, I've got my blob of iron hand steel on my wet palette and I've a little bit of water from my clean water to the side. So I'm going to uh, thin that a little bit and get some on my palette. Uh, what am I using? I am using an uh, Artis Opus S series, S series, two double O. That's my staple brush that I use for most things. Now, what I tend to find is I need a bit of a system to try and avoid, to try and avoid missing bits uh, on the mini. So the first thing I do is the pipes. There aren't any pipes on this one, so actually, I'm going to do this one first. First thing I do is the pipes. There are pipes up oh. one minute okay so we just rolled across the palette and managed to miss every single bit of paint jolly good uh yeah the pipes front and back there's normally a few two or three on the cover suits i think there's only one of the um frames that doesn't have them so it's not a big um, thing to be terribly precise with it because I'm just going to put um, the contrast over the top. Right, uh, holster. Next, there are a couple of silver buckles. Now, the rest of the holster is going to be black, so I'm just going to be quite slapdash with this to get it on there, and then the rest will get covered off when I put the black in around it. A bit more careful with the hilt of the gun okay then we have has he got grenades he has got grenades so there's this pouch which has got a skull and a couple of blobs and then a grenade get those over there as well do 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 the camera keeps wobbling because i keep catching the filming stand with the uh, <laughs> end of the, the brush. Uh, right, so these slightly trickier bits, there are some bits uh, of the piping I want to get. So I want to get this brace bit, this sort of electrical conduit type stuff, but it doesn't matter if I'm terribly precise, you don't really see that very much. But I also want to do these straps and get those from the top. Oops, got his nose. <laughs> Quickly wipe that off with my thumb. That's the thing to do if you inadvertently paint someone's nose. Now the bit in the middle I am going to do a different colour, but I'm going to do it over the silver. It's far too much hassle to work around it. And Yeah, I've gone over a bit there, but I will touch that up with a McCrag at the end i find it is quicker to do a to work quickly be a little bit less precise and then do a touch up at the end uh, it's overall quicker right i want the blobs on his ears doing and let's do come on focus on the right bit And do the little bit on the top of his head. And I'm just going to run the brush down sideways down the pipe. To get it to take a little bit of the pigment there. Okay, then I'm going to move on to the backpack. I'm going to do the vents. Also remembering to do uh, the tops, the bottoms. And the sides to sides. Let's see if I can improve the light a little bit there. Okay, is that better? That's a bit better. Just touching those bits up at the bottom there. The bit oops, caught the camera again. The bit, <laughs> but not with the model. That top bit. All right. The the next few stages are gonna cover up a multitude of sins anyway so i'm not too bothered if i'm a little imprecise i'm happier and i'm going quicker so front and back of the side pipes
Right, those pipes are done. Right then, so now the big vents are also going to be silver. So I'm just going to squad it around inside the um, exhaust vent. Oh, what have I done? I've got some silver on the shoulder pad and it's not coming off. I must have been earlier. Right, well, that's uh, a great opportunity to illustrate the the uh, the, uh, the tidy up. Okay, so filling these in as well. Then round from the side, just sort of tickling it up to the bit I want to... <laughs> The bit I want to stay blue that's not on the camera, that now is on the camera. There we go, we'll do the same thing on the side, like so. And then we are on to the gun. So the first bit I do on the gun to avoid forgetting it is, come on, focus. Come on, camera, don't be silly. There we go. The first thing I do to avoid forgetting it is the uh, just the handle. I'm not going to try and do the whole thing. We only see that bit. Then I'm going to start on the rest of the magazine, front and back. Go around the model sort of sideways on and wiggly just to try and get up to the blue but not onto the blue. Same around the hands, and same on the back, avoiding the hands. And then it looks a little bit like that. Right, so now we've got our Iron Hand Steel painted on the minis. It's um, Basilicarnum Grey. Now this one gets loads of the pigment dropping to the bottom of the um, bottle tub. To, to the bottom of the pot. Pot, that's the word. Uh, so I need to give this one a, a massively good shake to redistribute that before applying it over all the metal areas. Looking a little bit like this. I've not spared the brush. I've um, uh, or spared the paint. But... Now, I've not been sparing with it and I've coated all of the um uh, all the metal sections I can easily go over on the areas which I am about to paint with another colour. So I haven't need to be too careful on these buckles and things, but I need to be more careful uh, on the back. So there we go. Okay, so having done that, firstly, these things, they're great for um, contrasts and inks, yeah, they are incredibly difficult for cats to knock over. So, love these. Uh, so, uh, yes, the f one thing that you'll notice is that it has seriously dulled down all the metal. And that might be exactly what you want on certain parts, but not necessarily on others. So, Iron Breaker is a nice, super shiny. It's not the shiny shiniest. There are other shiny shinier, shinier shinies, but this is sufficiently shiny to get the effect that we want on these guns to just pick out some of the edges and the vents to look a little bit more shiny and some of these other bits and bobs. So what I am going to do is I am going to, with a dry brush, Normal GW small dry brush. I like these. I think they're very, uh, very effective. Although this one has, where are you? This one has started to splay a bit, which makes it a bit trickier to use, but it's still, still viable. So what I'm going to do is a heavy dry brush, pretty much all over the gun, um, but um, I'm gonna keep away from the fingers because I don't want to have to touch those up. But that's not a problem because. I want sort of some three dimension to the um, to the gun. I don't want it to all look uniform and shiny, otherwise I wouldn't have inked it in the first place. Um, a little bit on the um, on these straps, 
I'll just catch the edge of the um, of the pipes and just the top of the vents and the sides of these vents just to get and there are any grenades he's got just to get a, a shape a shade that's a bit more three-dimensional and then we are dark in the recesses and the light on the surface and my camera really does not know what it wants to focus on so that is the next step and there we go and that's the difference that's only taken me about a minute and I've really been pretty light with the dry brush but you can just contrast it to uh, the one that hasn't been done it's just that little bit shinier on the surfaces I mean if you look at the grenades mm, shiny explodey grenade and the bayonet so that's metal done Right, so now it's time for the black. I'm using Black Templar, which is the slightly more transparent of the two uh, contrast blacks. And using this one as an example, what I'm going to do is go around some of the more solid parts of the gun casing, the strap, the, um, the belt pouches. I will just sort of tickle up to the silver bits that I've already done. Uh, and onto the um, the undersuit that pokes out in various places. There's like an elbow there. And then depending on the individual model, if you can see the neck and I can get the angle with the brush, uh, I'll just tickle the neck as well. But it doesn't always make a huge amount of difference. But it can do, so I'll, uh, I'll do it on the ones I can get to and not on the ones I haven't. So here goes. And here we are. So we've got the bits of the suit between his legs, behind his knees, behind his backside, some pipes on the arm. This, this one's neck was exposed, so we've got that there. You can see a few bits where close up I, I've made mistakes. Um, I will look at it at arm's length and see how how visible it is when it comes to the touch-up stage. Uh, also, gone round the case. Come on, the casing on the bolter, but leaving some of the raised bits exposed, and the same on the pouch and holster. Right now, we are on to the gold. So, now that one, that one. So there's not a huge amount of gold uh, on these minis. There's a bit you can't actually quite see on this guy. There's a stud on the chest that we're doing gold. There's this little pendanty thing hanging from the bottom of the, the glass gum. And there are the studs on the shoulder pad. Um, I'm only going to put the a serif and sepia on, on this bit. It's the only bit that needs any definition. Because where these have had the Drakenoth wash, they are just a little bit darker around the rim of the stud. So when I paint it, I'm not going to go right the way down to the bottom. And that way, the studs will still look like they are a little bit shaded. And that should work. So the gold has been applied. If we look at this one. Uh, it's just giving, us, giving it a little bit of three dimensions with the sepia on there. I also put a bit on here, not strictly necessary. And there are a couple of little bits where I've gone a little bit too low with the Calgar on a couple of these studs that I will touch up in the touch up phase. Sorry, the McCrag. Onto the McCrag, not the Calgar. Okay, so next steps. I've only got three points left. Uh, it's the eyes and the sensors. So I'm going to have a coat of Mephiston Red and then a dot of Evil Sun Scarlet. Now on this mini, there's only three parts to do it on. We've got the two eye lenses and the visor sensor. So we're going to have Mephiston Red, then a dot of Evil Sun Scarlet. Then I'm going to go around all the bits 
that I need to with my crag glue and just touch them up. And there we are. The main paint job of the mini is now complete. Excuse me, complete. Uh, and I th I really like the way um, that the just the addition of a couple of little bits of red and a couple of little bits of gold turned the model from looking, you know, uh, really only partly complete to pretty well finished. So. Uh, what I'm going to do now is get these minis onto their bases, which will be covered in the basing video, which should be the next one after the next one in this series, and then we'll do the transfers. And here we have the finished models. You'll notice they are stuck to their scenic bases. Huzzah! Uh, scenic base um, video will be the next one of this series to come out. Uh, they also have their transfers on. They've got the tactical markings on each shoulder and the... Where have they gone? Yeah, uh, and also an old Third Ed era word bearer symbol on the uh, corpse on the base. So for transfers, I use uh, Microset and Microsol. They're a great combo. They work really well for that painted on finish. No, I'm not sponsored by Microset and Microsol, uh, but they work really well. Um, the claw show of um, the claw of uh, Fast Panda fame showed me that years ago. First on his gosh, his 40k Alpha Legion, and I was uh, totally converted ever since. Um, what you do is you paint these. These are numbered. Like Microset is number one. One. Microsol is number two, two. You paint the microset onto the shoulder pad first, then you apply the transfer, then you paint microset over the transfer, taking care not to dislodge it, then you let it dry, then you paint microsol over the top, and it just softens the transfer and lets it mould to the pad. Uh, you might need to, and then you let it completely dry. If the transfer is not completely flat, you do another set, another application, and you keep going until you've got a smooth transfer. Smooth, with a capital, smooth. And uh, there we go. We have our four tactical marines. These Now, why four, you might be asking? Well, I have two units of ten tactical marines. Each one has... Uh, a Sarge, a Legion Vexilla, um, an, a, a, um, a Vox, and an Augur Scanner. Uh, but with the extra four, which I got off eBay, got just a normal sprue uh, off eBay, with the extra four, I can then combine those two tens into a single 20 without having the problem of two Sarges, two Vexillas, two Voxes, etc., so that's why the four, and I thought, aha, I will make the video of them. Uh, and I, I don't know why they're on there. Um, and, <laughs> uh, whoops, continuity error. Um, there we go. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Let's, let's get some, some vaguely zoomy, zoomy close up. Uh, that's the, the, the final result. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you uh, want to support me, check out the product, the uh, video, it's late, <laughs> it's the video description. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways that you can do that if you want to, like channel memberships, joining uh, our really, really chilled narrative, um, hobby discord, stuff like that. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you found it useful, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.